You know, many people are becoming familiar with the Apple TV for getting video, pictures, and even your phone's content onto your TV. But until recently, Android hasn't had anything to contend with this TV juggernaut. Well, as many of you know, I'm an avid Android user and a big fan of Google. So I thought it's time that we take a look at what Android can do for your TV. First up, we're gonna have a look at the Favi Smart Stick running the Android OS. I really like the simplicity of this product because all you have to do is plug it straight into the back of your TV via the HDMI port. However, I was not a huge fan of the fact that it actually took a power source and an additional IR transmitter to use with the included remote. You know, if you have a wall-mounted TV, then it's a couple more wires that you have to contend with. I should also note that we used Favi's wireless keyboard to test the smart stick. Now this is an additional accessory and it talks to the Favi via Bluetooth. The wireless keyboard is almost the same price as the smart stick though, so you're gonna have to factor that into any buying decisions. On the top, you have access to music, video, photos, the browser, and app drawer. And what I like is the smart stick comes with Plex installed, which means you can also install Plex on your PC so you can share things like movies that you've downloaded onto your computer and show them right on your TV. Something that Apple TV can't do unless you bought your movies through iTunes. Another thing I like is that you can install whatever apps are on the Play Store too. So things like XBMC, Songza, and others can easily be loaded here. I like how the smart stick has an interface app that stays updated to show the last six apps that you use the most. Now what didn't work well for us with the Favi was the buffering. And we had issues with the smart stick on Netflix and YouTube. We found the interface to be a little bit slow and unresponsive at times, so you're gonna need to be a little bit patient. But still, if you take a look at it, the size and portability can make it handy to quickly make any TV into a smart TV. Next up, let's talk about Google TV. Now this has been a hot topic for a while and we're gonna demonstrate what it looks like installed on this device here, the Sony NSZ GS7, which for simplicity, I'm gonna call Sony's Google TV. Now this is more of a robust set-top box. It's got an HDMI input and output. It's got an IR blaster input and two USB ports for loading up your media. Now the best part of this system is actually the double-sided remote. On one side, if you take a look here, it's got a little touchpad, and you can see it's got different navigation in different areas. On the other side, flip it over, it's got a full-size QWERTY keyboard. This is awesome. It's also got buttons on the side that control your volume and channel up and down when you're watching TV. Now trust me, this is a big deal, and you would agree if you ever use the Apple TV remote to try to scroll through things like on-screen keyboards or do things like search. This keyboard is just what the doctor ordered. I really like having Chrome and the Google Play Store right on the interface, but I gotta tell you, one of the downsides that we found was that a lot of the apps that you're used to seeing on the Play Store are not ready for Google TV yet, so you won't have a huge selection available. I also like the UI and the way that the menu comes up on the bottom of the screen if you press the home key. The whole experience seemed to work really well. Unfortunately, Google TV doesn't quite feel finished yet. You know, we had issues with responsiveness and even freezing from time to time. It's not perfect, but we still think this box has a lot to offer. All in all, Apple TV still has the upper hand, especially given its low cost to get one. But after looking at a couple of these Android-based systems, I'm confident the competition is getting close. Look out, Apple.